If there are two things you need to remember in this community, they would be where plants are plants and grow lights are lights. Hello, my name is Nick and today I'm going to show you how I put together my setup. But firstly, and most importantly, I want to show you how to use cheap plebeian regular light bulbs as grow lights. You can't just use anything that emits light, so please continue watching the video before you try and grow your strawberry obliqua with uranium. Even if you don't intend to build this, this video will be helpful if you are going to be using artificial lighting for your plant. I decided to record myself putting this together in September and to grow these photosynthetic creatures through the entire photon void soul-sucking northeast winter I experience every year. I decided that might be a little bit more credible than putting this together and being like, well, there's light and there's plants. This should work, theoretically. It is now June and it has been six whole months of these plants being in here and I can now show you what the results are. Also hit the like button for me not losing this footage. It's called organization. But mostly luck. If you like the specific setup, I put it together for about $250 minus these humidity trays. I don't know why I got these. They're like 10 years old, but they lasted a long time. I'd also like to say I have two lights on each shelf, but only the back ones are hooked up right now because everything would be overexposed. And I will take this down and this out and show you how it looks. The reason I have it up right now is because I have lights right here and right here, and it would create a glare and you wouldn't really be able to see anything. But when you don't have studio lights on this, you can. This normally stays closed, however. Time for the light discussion. Under the umbrella of light, we will first talk about wavelengths. Light comes in different wavelengths. You might be familiar with Roy G. Biv. That is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So what wavelengths out of the spectrum do plants primarily use for photosynthesis? The first is blue. That's for foliar growth. That's probably what we're looking for in this community. Do you see any flowers anywhere? I didn't think so. We don't like those. Red is for flowering and fruit development. Ew. This is why these red and blue grow lights exist. And because I like to rave. I've never been to a rave in my life. I don't even know what you do at a rave besides take Molly. I think that's all you do at a rave. People use these lights because it cuts out on energy expenditure that plants don't use towards photosynthesis. According to GetUrbanLeaf.com, red and blue lights are apparently 10 to 15% more efficient than white light and because they want their plants to be purple all the time. I just gave my plants red light. I'm not ready for this whole sexual reproduction thing. The plants. To reiterate, white light is hitting plants with all the spectra including red and blue, but also some spectra that they don't use. Red and blue lights are used to hone in on the spectra that plants primarily use specifically. There is actually a third spectra that plants can use for photosynthesis, and surprisingly, it's green. For those of you that don't know exactly how plants work, plants appear green, and that is because they are reflecting green light unless they are half the plants in this community. And then they're reflecting white light. And of course, we talked about red and blue light and they can use that light for photosynthesis because the leaves can absorb it. The light excites the photoreceptors in the plants and that starts the chain reaction of photosynthesis. According to Michigan State University, this is because green light can more readily penetrate into the plant's tissues and reach further down into the plant because it is not immediately absorbed into the top layer of leaves like red and blue light. So you may ask, why am I using white light with all of the spectra, including green, as opposed to just red and blue, since red and blue lights are more efficient. Let's ask ourselves, why are we growing these plants? I'm assuming most of you have come to a conclusion 
and for those that have not, I'm assuming you're eating your philodendrons. It is for aesthetics. You paid $300 for the plant. Don't you wanna see it? How much is this table right here worth? About 3,000 a piece. Do you really want all of your plants to look like this? So how much is this table right here worth? About 3,000 a piece. Tell me why. It looks like I'm in a Czechoslovakian discotheque. Oh my God, this fern looks kind of cool under it though. Okay, this is the exception. I'm just enjoying, see, doesn't the fern look cool? All this foliage that I paid for. It's, you know, everything is just, this kind of looks like chocolate. What are they selling? Chocolate! Chocolate. Does anyone want to hear a spooky story? Ooh. Twins. I'm not super into aesthetic. I don't really care what the pots look like so much. I would like to see what my actual plant looks like on Earth and not Mars. One more thing, unless you have your red and blue lights in a closet or some type of enclosed space, it's obviously going to spill into your living space. And I don't think that's attractive either. If you have trouble with bright lights or you get migraines or aliens have laid eggs inside your mind, these lights can cause headaches. This is because you're only seeing two spectra when your eyes are used to seeing seven. Remember Roy G. Biv? Yep. All of those. The only practical use I could see these lights in is grow boxes or tents or closets for things like marijuana or vegetables. Let's talk about another type of light you wouldn't want to be exposed to in grow lights. That is UV light. Not for household use, you need to have protection unless you like staring into the sun, in which case your corneas are already fried. If the plants primarily use the visible light spectrum for photosynthesis, you might be wondering, why would companies put UV light in grow lights? The answer is secondary metabolites. Secondary metabolites are compounds that plants produce that are not necessarily needed for the basic survival of the plant. For example, chlorophyll is not a secondary metabolite. It is a primary metabolite because pretty much all plants have to do photosynthesis. The only reason I can imagine anyone would want to use UV light in this community for their plants is to sun stress Hoyas. I'm going to show you my Hoya sunrise now. I don't know if you can see this, but it is green. The red pigments are a secondary metabolite. They are stimulated in the presence of UV light, kind of like melanin in our skin. Of course, the plant has survived all winter without them because it does not need them. Secondary metabolites include things like THC. If the marijuana plant is stressed, it may produce more THC. In crops, it can increase antioxidant levels in fruits and vegetables. Overall, UV light can stimulate the production of compounds that we find useful or increase the nutritional content of a plant. The next thing we are going to talk about are light specifications. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the relationship between lumens and watts. Watts are the amount of electricity that the bulb takes up from the outlet. The amount of lumens is the amount of light that the bulb puts out. The most common form of grow lights that people have in their households are compact fluorescents and LEDs. I have LEDs. The reason I have LEDs is because they are more efficient. This bulb right here is 40 watts and 5,200 lumens. A comparable four foot bulb that is compact fluorescent would put out 2,300 lumens, according to a listing that I found on Amazon. That is not good. That is less than half the light that this puts out per watt. Last thing about bulbs is light temperature. This does not equate to how hot the bulbs will be when operating. We want for growth, which is usually what we want in this community, cool white bulbs. They put out more blue than warm bulbs. Cool white bulbs range from 5,000 to 7,000 Kelvin. The higher the number it is, the more blue that the bulb is putting out and less red. My bulbs, for example, are 6,500 Kelvin. For growth, 
6,500 worked really well for me. My Hoya Rebecca did flower and it currently has a bud, so that did not inhibit flowering completely. If you want more flowers and less growth, you would want to get a light bulb that was 3,500 Kelvin to 4,500 Kelvin. Let us now talk about my setup. This shelf is from Target. It is 72 inches tall, 18 inches deep, and 40 inches wide. That currently gives me 18 square feet of growing space with the three shelves I have in here. It comes with a fourth shelf, but that was a little too crowded for me. If you're going to be doing seedlings, they're very small plants, you could definitely do four shelves. It was $80. Uh, it was the cheapest one that I could actually find. I have two lights per shelf. They are four feet long. You already know they're 40 watts each. I keep the lights on for 12 hours a day. I DIY'd some reflectors out of aluminum foil. Not very fancy, but they do work. I found a package for six for 66 because I have six right here or 10 for $98. So that's a little over $10 a bulb. What else? This cover, I love this cover. You can get it all clear or you can get it gray and it's enclosed on the sides. I personally like this. I like that there's not a lot of light spillage. This one was 55, the clear one 66. Of course, it opens as it is now, but I keep it closed for the majority of the time. Um, It's sticky. I usually open it up like this to let the heat out. You can access it from the sides. I just caught this pothos leaf in the zipper. This side, you see what I mean? So that is what it looks like closed. It is not a glass Ikea cabinet. However, I'm sure a glass Ikea cabinet this size with lights and everything would probably cost you like upwards of two thousand dollars this is around 250. there is no added humidity in there it stays around like 50 or 60 percent which in my opinion unless you're kind of growing something that's really eccentric it should be okay for most of the plants we grow i have an anthurium crystallinum that would get brown tips all the time and that kind of got resolved with the added humidity. I know you're thinking about the humidity trays. I just use those for drainage. They're empty right now. Except for like a couple drops of water occasionally, they're not doing anything. I don't mist. It's just not necessary. Lastly, a little accessory that I would recommend. It's this Grovey thermometer that I got off of Amazon. Right now it says it's 77 degrees in there and 63% humidity. Great if you're going to keep this closed fully during winter, which I do, but you still need to monitor it and make sure it's not getting too hot. So this is great. I let it get up into the 80s. Heat rises so it'll all go to the top which is why i put my thermometer at the top because if i had it at the bottom it might be 70 degrees at the bottom and 90 degrees at the top i think that's about it i just wanted to show everyone that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on something like this and more importantly you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars on a couple grow lights Plants will grow perfectly fine for six months under warehouse lighting. Unless they're all just gonna like turn to mush tomorrow. That would be very ironic. And then I couldn't release this video because that would be quite the lie. Personally, I don't wanna sell something to people that I wouldn't buy myself. I've gotten a slew of offers to advertise grow lights, but I decided that I just wanted to show something that was more helpful instead of just saying like, look, a grow light, it works. I mean, they do work, but at what cost? A lot to us. I will now show you how I put the grow lights onto the shelf. It's very complicated. Not. As you can see, I have this zip tied, two zip ties through the bars of the shelf. Here is the end of the shelf. I decided to go in one, two, three, four five bars and the fifth bar is in the middle so you're seeing where the next light is going and it's going in five bars from the back so 
everything is evenly spaced. What I have done is loosely put the zip tie around the three bars and we're actually going to slide the grow light in. These are 15 inch zip ties, by the way. You are not going to need all 15 inches in this case. Okie doke. Let's slide it in. LEDs facing down. In we go. Don't drop it. Ta-da! Looks very precarious, but we'll fix it. Now, I was hoping I could fit the light in between the edges of the grate, but the lights are slightly longer. So you're just going to have to make sure that the edges kind of go like this or else they'll like cave in and be uneven. Let's test these out. That is bright. Lastly, we have this hood. Okay, let's see this for the first time. See if I ordered the wrong thing. So it's gray, like my life. Follow my tumbler. <gasps> it is. Let's put it on. I'm going to open this. All the zippers. Uh, wait, I think, no, that's not backwards. Just kind of How suggestive. Maybe I should get a Georgia O'Keeffe painting. Okay, that's it for the grow shelf tour. I hope you enjoyed. Finally, if you want to support the channel because I am slowly killing off my sponsorship opportunities, you can buy me a coffee. Or if you're feeling a little bit more committed, more committed than I have ever been in a relationship, you can be a patron. Even myself, I broke up with myself last week but we decided unanimously a couple days ago to like, come back together and rekindle our relationship because we really needed to like make this video. Time for the light discussion. 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 Time for the light discussion.